Hey guys, let's get more news about Lakers, but first, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. Lakers' solution for success is slapping Darvin Ham right in the face. The Los Angeles Lakers do not have the record they were expecting to have at this point in the season, but at least the arrow is pointing up. The ninth-seeded Lakers are 36-30 on the season but have two big wins in a row and have beaten some tough competition as of late. It is safe to say that the Lakers are finally starting to figure things out and the hope is that this positive trend continues as the regular season winds down. Los Angeles has a lot of work to do not just to go on a deep playoff run, but to get there in the first place. Thankfully, there seems to be a fairly simple solution that can lead the Lakers to the promised land. As complex as the game of basketball is, there is a rather obvious trend that directly correlates with the success of the team, how much Torian Prince plays. While the sample size is much smaller with Prince playing 2400 hours 30 minutes or fewer, it is quite remarkable just how much better the purple and gold are when he is not logging a lot of playing time. Los Angeles, quite literally, goes from a team well under .500 with Prince to a team that is almost unbeatable when Prince hardly plays. It is not like the Lakers are beating up on only bad teams when Prince isn't getting playing time, either. The Lakers have beaten the likes of the Milwaukee Bucks, Los Angeles Clippers, Phoenix Suns, Dallas Mavericks, New Orleans Pelicans, twice, Oklahoma City Thunder, Minnesota Timberwolves, and Golden State Warriors when Prince plays less than 24 and a half minutes. The team's only two losses when Prince's playing time is slashed are against the Denver Nuggets and Sacramento Kings, both of which are playoff teams. If we extend this to include games where Prince did not play, the Lakers are 20-3 in games without Prince. Darvin Ham has had this obsession with Prince dating back to the start of the season. It likely stems from the fact that Ham coached Prince before, but that does not change the fact that he was inherently hurting the team just to play one of his favorite guys. These are the kind of trends that Ham should be noticing, especially when the numbers are so obviously bad for Prince and the Lakers when he plays. The Lakers' net rating is 7.2 points worse when Prince is on the court versus when he is off the court this season. To put that into perspective, a 7.2-point net rating difference is nearly identical to the difference between the fourth-ranked team in the league in net rating, New Orleans Pelicans, plus 5.3, and the 22nd-ranked team, Chicago Bulls, minus 2.0. With Prince on the floor, the Lakers have a net rating of minus 3.6, which would rank 24th in the league. Without Prince, the net rating jumps to plus 3.6, which would rank 10th. The Lakers have been far from perfect this season, but the fact that Prince is the difference between being a top-10 team and a bottom-10 team is the most damning evidence possible against the veteran role player, and his head coach, for that matter. Lakers injury report, LeBron James questionable against Kings, Cam Reddish out. The Los Angeles Lakers have listed LeBron James, left ankle peroneal tendinopathy, and Anthony Davis, bilateral Achilles tendinopathy, as questionable and Cam Reddish, right ankle sprain, as out for Wednesday night's game against the Sacramento Kings. Gabe Vincent, Christian Wood, Colin Castleton, and Jared Vanderbilt all remain out with their respective injuries with no set timetable for a return. Vincent recently progressed to non-contact work and Vanderbilt appears to be making progress as well, so the hope is they will be back before the end of the regular season. The ankle injury is something that James has had to manage over the last couple of months. He underwent a treatment during the All-Star break and has missed two games in the second half, although he has been able to play in all of the other ones. Meanwhile, in addition to the Achilles issue that Davis has been playing through, he hurt his shoulder against the Milwaukee Bucks when he tried to take a charge on Giannis Antetokounmpo late in the third quarter. While Davis was able to finish out the game, he was barely able to lift his left shoulder and wasn't able to make much of an impact because of it. He responded in a big way on Sunday against the Minnesota Timberwolves, however, putting up a stat line that had never been done before in NBA history. The shoulder injury appears to be past him as it is no longer on the injury report. 
given where the standings are at and how important this matchup is against the Kings, both of the Lakers' stars will surely do whatever they can to make sure they are in the lineup. The Lakers are 0-3 against the Kings this season, including a disappointing loss last week after building a 19-point lead in the first quarter. Reddish has also been dealing with an ankle injury that has kept him out of the lineup, although the hope is that he will be available sometime soon, just not against the Kings. At this stage of his career and the season, LeBron James likely will not be able to get his ankle back to 100% until the offseason. With that being the case, it comes down to how he is able to manage the pain, and last Friday night his ankle soreness was categorized as severe, which is why he was forced to sit out. As long as James is able to manage the pain and keep it from hindering him too much though, he will continue to play through the injury. Shaquille O'Neal predicts LeBron James' future with Lakers and details new role during NCAA March Madness. Shaquille O'Neal obviously played for a number of teams, but he'll always be best known for his tenure with the Los Angeles Lakers. The most dominant modern-day big led the Lakers to three consecutive championships at the turn of the millennium with Kobe Bryant, the last team to do it, as he makes sure to mention, as the focal point of the team, winning three finals MVPs while overpowering his opposition. The numbers and records are endless, with O'Neal's 38-point, 16.7 rebound, 2.7 block average during the 2000 final still ranking as one of the finest performances in championship series history. And while there have been many great teams since then, including Kobe's Lakers teams in the post-Shaq era, LeBron James' Miami Heat squads of the early 10s and Steph Curry's Warriors teams over the past decade, no team since the turn of the century matches the early 2000s Lakers, according to the Big Diesel himself. Of course, by far, says O'Neill, without hesitation. The Hall of Fame Center explains what separated those teams from all of the great championship squads people have seen since. The most controversial, the most enigmatic team ever created, O'Neill said during a one-on-one -on -one interview on behalf of his partnership with the Home Depot. There will never be another one-two punch, referring to him and Bryant, that went through what we went through and still had success. Think about it. All the problems you thought we had, we won three out of four. Show me another team that's doing that. The four-time NBA champion played alongside a number of greats outside of Bryant during his 19-year career. Not only did he notably lead, alongside Dwayne Wade, the Heat to their first title back in 06, he played with current Lakers star, LeBron, towards the end of his own career with the Cleveland Cavaliers. O'Neal, who is obviously very familiar with James, believes the 39-year-old star will probably end his career with the Lakers. He probably will, says O'Neal about James ending his career in Los Angeles. LeBron is the experienced author who doesn't have to write another book. All of his books have been novels and bestsellers. The Four Rings, definitely a Hall of Fame player, the 40,000 points and counting. He's doing things that will never be broken. He's just trying to add more chapters to the book. And you, fan, what do you think of the situation, Shaquille Neal? Leave your opinion in the comments.